This is a screencast for NAT 1780. I understand that some of you may be finding it a bit challenging to kind of make sense of the system's approach to, uh, to thinking and particularly the use of process flow diagrams. So what I wanted to do in this screencast is give you a fairly concrete example and I'm going to use wood to uh, help you uh, with that or help us with that. So what you can see in this uh, photograph here is one of my grand dogs. Her name is Bailey and as you can see she's a Chihuahua and uh, in this picture from probably at this point a couple of years ago you can see that she's inspecting this nice pile of wood here. Now my purpose in showing you this picture is more than just to share with you the grand dog. It's really to focus in on the wood, which from the perspective of this screencast is going to be our source. In fact, it's going to be our source of carbon dioxide. Now, until we actually do something to the wood, the carbon that uh, helps to make up this wood is essentially stored in the wood. It's not until some kind of uh, action uh, takes place that the carbon is actually uh, freed up from this source and released uh, into, in, in this particular example, Earth's atmosphere. And of course the process that takes place to uh, facilitate the release of carbon and ultimately carbon dioxide, which is what we want to focus in on in this particular screencast, is that we actually burn the wood. So the, the process of burning uh, this wood, you can see here we have a, an image taken at uh, nighttime of a lovely bonfire where we've uh, taken some of the wood from a pile like the one we saw with uh, Bailey in the first picture there. Uh, we've taken this wood and we've lit a, a pretty impressive looking fire. And so now we actually have an active process underway. We're burning the wood. And in fact, this, uh, this process of burning wood is something that we refer to slightly more technically as combustion. So combustion uh, is our process. And what we can see in this last picture here is uh, the effect of doing this kind of a thing, where we have uh, we've clearly have a, um, uh, some... Uh, some wood that is being burned down here in a bonfire pit towards the sort of lower left of this uh, picture here and it's producing a pretty substantial uh, plume of, uh, of smoke which is of course uh, particulate matter but also in amongst that although it's not visible to the eye what's also present there is uh, carbon dioxide. So uh, before we capture this in terms of a very nice and simple process flow uh, diagram. Let me go back to this picture and maybe put in a few annotations. So uh, we're gonna, as I say, we're focusing in on uh, carbon dioxide in this particular example. And uh, in this case, uh, we're going to treat the wood as our source for carbon dioxide, all right? And then in the second figure here, I think we get a pretty good sense as to uh, what's going on here. We're actually burning the wood and therefore we're uh, uh, putting in place the process of combustion. Whoops, that doesn't look very good. See if we can improve upon that. Combustion. So that's our process. And uh, then as the, uh, the, the last uh, image kind of shows, uh, what you can see here is that the, the destination for the, uh, the carbon dioxide that's being liberated through this process of, of combustion from its original storage in the wood pile is of course Earth's atmosphere. So that's our sink or the, uh, the destination. So if we put all of this together, what we can do is come up with a very nice, uh, simple process flow diagram. So the wood is our source of carbon dioxide. Maybe we'll just uh, annotate that here. So source of 
of carbon dioxide. Then uh, we have the atmosphere. As the as the sink for carbon dioxide, and we'll just uh, try and make that very clear as well. All right, and then finally we have uh, the process that allows for this uh, this transfer to take place from the uh, from the wood pile into the atmosphere as you could see from the uh, the, the photographs I showed that we were illustrating the uh, the process of combustion and uh, so we'll just uh, also make sure we make a note that this is our process all right so we have a source we have a process and we have a sink and that's really all there is to it it's uh, really not a whole lot more complicated than that now of course um, what makes this more complicated is that there are a number of source process sink triples active in various parts of, Earth, of the Earth's system at various times. And uh, we've already seen one example of this. For example, uh, this is a, uh, an image I've shown you before. It's from your textbook. And you can see that there are a number of different source process sink uh, triples that are uh, uh, visible in this uh, diagram. In fact, um, the atmosphere is shown here. Uh, even though it wasn't particularly well clearly labeled. And just to kind of reemphasize what we've just done, let me just highlight that we have, for example, gone ahead and burned uh, something. In our example, we were burning uh, logs of wood, split wood from a wood pile. Uh, we're burning it. So here's our process here. And through that process, uh, which we labeled uh, combustion, uh, we were liberating carbon dioxide from uh, storage in uh, in wood uh, through that combustion process and into the uh, into the atmosphere. So um, I just wanted to show you that uh, this also does apply in the case of these uh, slightly more complex looking uh, systems diagrams. Now, one of the things you can also just to to kind of just wrap it up here, but also share with you one other thought. One of the other interesting points that's uh, that's mentioned here, uh, that that's conveyed here, is the notion that different components in the system, like the atmosphere, can act as a pro. Uh, sorry, different components in the system, like the atmosphere, can act as a source in some contexts and as a sink in other contexts. So we've just gone through this example where we were burning wood and through that process of combustion we were directing carbon dioxide that was stored in wood into the atmosphere. So the atmosphere acts as a sink for carbon dioxide in that particular context. But as you can see from this diagram the atmosphere can also act as a source of carbon dioxide. So for example carbon dioxide uh, originating in Earth's atmosphere through the process of photosynthesis that takes place in, uh, in vegetation can actually be removed from Earth's atmosphere. So vegetation can act as a sink with respect to uh, carbon dioxide when it removes carbon dioxide from Earth's atmosphere and in that context uh, Earth's atmosphere is a, uh, a source of CO2. So there's this peculiar kind of duality to these different components in the system that they can act as sources or sinks depending on the, uh, the context in which uh, they are being used. And it's really the processes that are taking place that determine whether or not uh, a particular component in a, in a system will be regarded as a source or a sink. All right, and as this diagram shows, 
you can actually have, uh, as we see here very clearly, you can actually have the atmosphere simultaneously acting as a source and a sink for carbon dioxide. And it's really all about which process uh, you want to, uh, to make reference to. And with that, I'll close up this uh, screencast for NAT 1780.